have been doing some uh, research into an issue that I think is of public interest and certainly of value to the city taxpayers. And <clears throat> before I go into the story, I want to preface this by saying is having worked at City Hall for eight years, you know, I still have friends on just about every floor of City Hall. So you can imagine over the last five years, folks would send me emails or call me or reach out or find me on the street. And either we would commiserate about maybe some bad decisions being made, changes at City Hall, or there would be some things that they said, you really need to look into this. And last July, uh, I was having a conversation with someone passing by, and they said, you need to check out assessments downtown and start with David. Um, I thought, I didn't think much of it, to be perfectly honest, Bob, because if you remember the Press and Sun Bulletin in April of 2017, they, Hannah, Sh Hannah Schwartz, the reporter, she did an article and it was titled something about, you know, the potential conflicts of interest of a mayor who holds properties, right? Right, and and so that ran online and then I think they put it as um, a front page story on a, on a Sunday and it was interesting because she had been able to dig deeper and also speak with Mayor David about the properties he owns, not just downtown, but elsewhere in the city. And it was interesting to me because some of those issues had occasionally come up on this program mm -hmm. when, when the mayor has visited here. Uh, you know, at least a few times we had brought up uh, not just the downtown properties, but also properties that he owns uh, through various LLCs right. in the First Ward on Clinton Street. Exactly. And so she had interviewed uh, government ethicists, and they said there are basically two potential conflicts of interest. One is if the city were to start leasing space from, you know, the property owned by the elected official or the mayor. Um, the second one was if there are any questionable reductions in their property assessments. Now, the reporter for the Press and Sun did a great job, reviewed all of the mayor's properties, and confirmed that there were no changes in assessments and that there were no contracts for leases. So when this person said that to me, I thought, well, there's probably nothing there. Well, sure enough, I went home a couple nights later. I pulled up. So this is a public service uh, announcement <laughs> in, in, in the middle of the story. Uh, for folks who ever want to just look up property information, you can go to IMO Broome County. So if you just Google IMO, it stands for Image Made Online, IMO Broome County. You can type in any address, any last name, all the records come up, assessments, what they pay in taxes, the sales uh, history. So I went to the mayor's property, Mayor David's property at 45 Court Street. And Bob, I don't know if you have it up on the screen. Um, Actually, I do. And this is a, a tool that I use frequently, uh, not necessarily looking up assessments, but just for uh, property transactions. And you know, it can be helpful as a, as a journalistic tool. So I'm familiar with the site. But I, I am looking at uh, one specific property. 45 uh, Court Street, right, this which is, is the mayor's uh, a block, a, about a block away from where we are. We're at 59 Court Street, and 45 Court Street is uh, just uh, to the west of Washington Street. So mm -hmm. a, about, uh, I, I think I would guess it's about 93 steps from our front door. I, you still have some arm strength. You could hit it with a baseball. I'm the sure. only reason I know that <laughs> is I've stepped off how, how many steps it is from our front door to Galaxy Brewing. I, I have <laughs> people say, well, how would you know how far it is to the mayor's property? I'm just guessing based on a previous story I did w involving Galaxy Brewing. <laughs> um, sure, a previous story. Anyways, uh, so you could see, uh, you're probably a bit surprised as I was when you can read that the assessment on the mayor's property dropped 27% from 179000 in 2017 to 131,000 and change in 2018. So that's a difference in assessment of $48,000, or as you said, uh, you did the percentages, 20? 20? 26.8%, so 27%. Okay. We'll call it 27. So I was surprised. You know, I, I wasn't just going to go ahead and release this. It was, let's kind of be a responsible steward of this information. Uh, let's respect the person who gave this to me. Um, so. Uh, they expected me to approach this with integrity, so I said, let's do some due diligence. So I talked with New York State Department of Taxation and Finance representatives, folks at the state comptroller's office. I talked with a local assessor in New York, familiar with New York State practices, and I found out that there's basically only two ways that a property owner could have their property assessment reduced. 
um, absent litigation, of course, but one is, and these are all New York State laws, is that you fill out this, to be technical, the New York State Real Property Form 524, and you submit it to your assessor, and then it goes before the Board of Assessment Review. This in Binghamton, like all other jurisdictions, has a three-member, citizen member, a Board of Assessment Review. They review your case, they can reduce your assessment or not. If you don't agree with it, then you could pursue litigation. That's one way to go through BAR, Board of Assessment Review. The second way is you fill out that form, 524, and you meet with the negotiator, and maybe there was a clear error, or maybe there was a dramatic flood to your property and you no longer have any income coming in. And the assessor can clearly make a case based on the information you provided. You know what? I will negotiate this with you. It's called a stipulation, right? And so basically, you sign the stipulation part in the form, you're done with it. Those are the only two ways. So I said, okay, well, let's use the freedom of information law. So I, go, uh, I foiled the city assessor's office. I said, please send me all of the complaint assessment forms, the grievance applications that you've received from property owners from 2016 to 2018. Within one week, I got back from the city of Binghamton's law office a very detailed 14-page Excel spreadsheet of every case. And about each year, there was about 100 cases. I looked for Mayor's case, 45 Court Street. It wasn't there. I double-checked. I triple-checked. I said, of course, it has to be here. Um, but it wasn't. And I going to assume it was clerical error, Bob. <laughs> we'll continue with this responsible approach to this information. Now, mind you, this, for instance, in 2018, on that very detailed spreadsheet, there were about 95 cases that went before the Board of Assessment Review, and of those, 16 were stipulations. So clearly, all of the cases were listed on the spreadsheet, except one, the mayor's. So I said, okay, well, Let's do some further investigation. <coughs> so I had a friend go in to the assessor's office, and, and we randomly picked three of the cases that were identified as stipulation cases, right, on that spreadsheet, or excuse me, four, and then the mayor's property. Now, the assessor has a portfolio, a, a manila folder of every property in the city of Binghamton. It includes all of the real property, you know, papers, forms. So. My friend went in, the assessor's staff were very courteous. They pulled all five folders, took pictures of all the documents in the folder. Now, of those four cases where the stipulations were listed on that spreadsheet, all of them had the New York Real Property Form 524 filled out, completed appropriately, part six stipulations signed by the assessor and the property owner. This is a multi-page form. The mayor's, it was one page, it looked like a 1980s, you know, city hall form. It was half filled out. The other half was filled out by the assessor himself, because you could tell by his handwriting, because he put notes on the side. And then Rich just initialed it. So here you had, shortly after election, a year after Hannah had done a study or story on this at the press, the mayor kind of quietly walked down from the fourth floor to the second floor, closed the door, talked with the assessor, presented no evidence or documentation, and got himself a 27% cut on his property tax bill. Um, the least transparent way possible, and I think the public certainly has a right to know this information, and I think the council, I'm putting this out there because the public's gonna do with it what they wish, but I also hope the city council follows up on a bipartisan review of what happened, how, and why. And I think there's one last important point to this story, and that is that the assessor serves a six-year term. The assessor is appointed by the mayor. The assessor's term expires later this year in August and September. Um, was that quid pro quo? I don't know. but. You know, I hope the public raises some questions, encourages the council to do their investigation, a bipartisan thorough review. Were there others that got this treatment? Was this the only one? To me, it seems unethical, but was anything done that was also illegal? Did you 
notice anything else with the other properties that the mayor still owns? In, in all Binghamton? of those assessments um, were the same. So thank you for clarifying that. So what is your sense based on on the information that you discovered? Um, I mean, you've laid out essentially what appears to have happened. Do you, you have uh, any other theories as, as you suggested or pointed out there is um, an assessor who serves uh, a six-year term and noted that the term will be expiring it, it i mean what what else might be at play here if anything i would say just self-interest but you know that's not for me to judge um you know i understand that in presenting this information like you you said i ran for mayor before um i'm certain some people will question my motives uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the first response out of the mayor or others is that, you know, this is political, this is sour grapes. Is it? I think that if – there are two things to that. One is that when I ran, you put yourself out there. You, your family is vulnerable to attacks. I'm vulnerable to attacks. But you run because you love this community. The Board of Elections doesn't make you sign a waiver of your civic rights and responsibilities and your – desire to be engaged in an informed citizen. So before I ran, I was very active. After I ran, I'm going to be very active. People know that I'm an advocate of good government. But secondly, I think that that is the page from the playbook, right, to call me, to call this political. And I think that the louder those opponents criticize me and make those claims, it means the closer this criticism is to the target because they don't want you to focus on the issue. And the issue is what happened and why. That's why I'm not going to engage in any conspiracy theories or political motivations. I'm just putting this information out here responsibly, and I hope the public, the media outlets, and the, cit and the city council does appropriate work on behalf of the residents and taxpayers to figure out what happened. A change in, in a property assessment means real savings, too, over over the course of, of the years, and there's another website where you can look up uh, tax bills, for example. So on that property, this does not include the, the school tax, which is a separate thing, which also is thousands of dollars, but the initial tax bill for that property in 2018, January 2018, was $9,007, and the tax bill for a year later, January 1st, 2019, the tax bill was $6,562. So that's, that's I'm sure a significant everyone, difference. I'm sure everyone would have loved a tax cut like that. But, you know, here's the thing is not only did Hannah do this story, but we have to realize everyone in Broome County realizes there's probably only one real estate market in all of Broome County that has boomed. It's downtown Binghamton, right? If you remember Mayor David himself, secured a windfall profit in real estate transaction with the family dollar store right across the street, right? In 2010, he bought it for 655000 Seven years later, in 2017, he sold it for $1.2 million. So on one side of the street, the property values doubled, but yet on the other side of the street, apparently we're supposed to believe that the property values went down 27%. So the actions here are dubious, they're suspect, and they just don't fly with market realities and common sense. For people not familiar with the property that we've been discussing, it's it's a mixed-use property. It has uh, a couple of Two uh, commercial tenants uh, ongoing on the commercial tenants on the ground floor, uh, an Indian restaurant, and then the uh, shop Some that delicious, delicious nuts and candies, nuts. chocolates. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so both wonderful tenants. And they've been there for they've been fixtures on Court Street. Those two tenants, and then I believe the second and third floors are are used for residential. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to come down. But again, I I hope that the City Council uh, looks into this matter. There's a lot of interesting questions I think that need to be raised, and I hope the mayor also comes very clear with the public as to why he felt this was ethical to do this and his justification for it. Tariq Abdelazim, former candidate for mayor. Do you think you'll ever run for mayor again? I think I'm going to learn from uh, Kirsten Gillibrand and just say, 
we don't know what might happen. <laughs> we start off with a response to Tariq Abdelazim, who was just in here. He, he came in around 9.30, and he talked about uh, some information he Qu developed. Quite a coincidence, right? <laughs> some people have told me in life there are no coincidences. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but... Right, so you, you, you explained to me before we, we took air the, the latest kind of theory that uh, he's, uh, he's promoting against me. So this is what he talked about on, on the program. Right. I'll, I'll try to synthesize it okay. because uh, the segment uh, ran as an okay. extended Take segment. Essentially, right. essentially, it's about the assessment of property you own at 45 Court Street. Right which is a, a mixed-use building. Correct. Three stories, I believe. Correct. And residential. So far, so good. <laughs> Correct. Everything, everything so far I is true. You have to be careful. You, you know, right. So, I mean, so a residential on, on the upper floors and two uh, long-standing businesses, well, well-loved businesses on, right. on the street level. So Tariq Abdelazim uh, looked at the property assessment, and he noted that the assessment for 2017 was $179,000 and the 2018 assessment was reduced to $131,300. He did the calculation. I believe he said that's a reduction of nearly 27%. Well, if he said that, it must be true, right? So... So okay. So that, that was the, the starting off point. Then okay. he... Um, so he... He wondered, uh, I guess generally, at a time when most downtown properties, especially along Court Street, are, are appreciating because there's been a lot of development. And downtown, I, I would uh, submit to you, downtown has uh, come back to life, say, over the last 10 or 15 years. Well, thank you. We've worked very, very hard at it. <laughs> so that's, I'll take that as a, as a backhanded compliment from him. Okay. He didn't say that. I oh, said well that. Oh, well, then I'll take that compliment yeah, from you. Yes, I mean, thank you, Bob. As, as a person who has worked we, we've downtown. We've worked very hard at it. As, as a person who has worked downtown, I, okay. I recognize there's a big difference downtown right, uh, so over the last couple of decades. So anyway, with property values to a large extent at least uh, remaining stable or in some cases appreciating, um, one of the initial questions came up about the change in assessment and also questions about the process that was used because he – he uh, attempted through uh, foiling documents to find um, specifically what process was used to ultimately get a significant assessment reduction on your property at 45 Court Street. Right. So, uh, so basically, let's just jump right into this. Um, the property, uh, 45 Court Street, that was actually the first property that I bought um, after leaving City Hall. Uh, I believe I, I closed on it in 2006, moved in in 2007. And so at that time, that property was eligible for what was called uh, the Empire Zone. Uh, that program really doesn't exist anymore, but uh, it provides for uh, incentives for a 10-year period. And so basically, in, in short, what that means is your assessment is frozen for the first seven years, and then the final three years, it, it uh, increases um, uh, until... Uh, the 10 year period is done. So um, this was a building I purchased uh, under the, uh, the Ryan Abdelazim regime and uh, the uh, program expired uh, 10 years later. And at that point in time, uh, the, the results or the, you know, the assessment taxes, uh, the impact after a 10 year period was, was higher than I, than I was told it would be when I purchased the property 10 years ago. So. I went to the assessor to ask him some questions on that because, you know, my experience uh, as a private citizen dealing with some, not all, of uh, the department heads uh, under the previous administration is, you know, I, I didn't really feel I was being treated fairly by them. They, they, I was targeted, I think, by, by some of them as uh, somebody who was going to be a, a mayoral candidate or who had actually uh, ran and lost in, in 2009. So. Uh, I, I went to him and just uh, asked some questions about it. I said, this doesn't really look right to me, seem right to me. Um, uh, as mayor, I, I certainly think um, elected officials should be held to a, a higher standard, but that doesn't mean I should be treated unfairly. Or, so um, I asked, him, to, I asked him, him some questions about it. 
And he took a look at it and said, you know what, there are some things that are kind of out of whack here, not in line with what there should be. Here's the process that you uh, would, would, would go through um, to, to rectify some of these things. And so, um, you know, he certainly did uh, a very, you know, thorough analysis. Um, this is something that happens to literally hundreds of properties uh, on an annual basis um, in the city of Binghamton. And so, I mean, that's, that's basically uh, the, the, the gist of it. So it was connected to the expiration of this uh, Empire Zone program. And um, I, you know, I felt that I didn't know if, if when I entered the program, somebody, somebody put their thumb on the scale or they, they were told to, you know, treat me differently or, or whatever. But after a 10-year period of time, um, I had some questions about it, things that didn't quite seem, seem right and fair. So that's why I asked them to take a look at it. So the process was handled solely by the city assessor, Scott Snyder? Yeah, Scott, Scott Snyder actually is somebody that was hired by the previous administration. Uh, he does an outstanding job. I, he is an individual of the highest uh, integrity. Uh, he actually uh, uh, is the uh, assessor for multiple uh, municipalities uh, across, across the region. Um, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's very good. He's as uh, good as it gets, and uh, uh, he, is, he is somebody with an extremely high level of, of experience, uh, morals, integrity, um, and he's a great employee for the city of Binghamton. Tariq Abdelazim pointed out that I believe he said that uh, the assessor's term will expire later this year, and Tariq questioned whether there could have been a quid pro quo if the uh, assessor wants to be reappointed to another term. I mean, that's, that's really, uh, you know, it's, it's unfortunate to hear him say those sorts of things toward the, the assessor. I actually don't know when the uh, assessor's term expires. Um, I'm going to have to now look uh, to see when, when it expires. Um, but um, I, uh, I've known Scott for a long period of time, and Scott would never, ever uh, engage in anything that was uh, unethical, uh, underhanded, you know, below board, uh, et cetera. Was there, and, and and nor would I, I guess I should should add to that if we're talking about two sides. But um, no, I I think you know Scott basically did a uh, a review like he normally does on properties and basically said you know yeah you're 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 being treated unfairly in this situation or your uh, your assessment is higher than it should be and. Um, uh, m my attitude is there's a process available for, for all residents uh, and business owners in the city of Binghamton, and hundreds of them avail themselves to the process on a regular basis. And my attitude is that I shouldn't be treated better or worse. I sh you should be treated fairly. Was the process employed here any different than what most property owners would, would go through as far as uh, obviously uh, people can – uh, file a, a grievance, and and there is a, a part where uh, a going through the board of assessment do, review, right. or as as Tarek uh, Abdelazim mentioned, you could also uh, file a, a state real property form. And he said that uh, through his research by foiling documents, uh, some people that went that route. Uh, I think he said four po properties. He found there were folders containing their stipulations, but he said of note to him was the case involving your property at 45 Court Street. That paperwork did not exist, or at well, least well, it wasn't provided yeah, when so, he foiled so, so, so first of all, uh, uh, you know, he, he's not an expert. I know he likes to claim that he's an expert on whatever topic that he's talking about. So as, as far as what he says the process is, um, you know, I'm not necessarily, necessarily going to go down that road. The reality is, uh, if you want to talk about what the process is, you should talk about the people involved in it. You should talk to the city assessor and, uh, you know, uh, other people that are experts in this area. Because obviously, you know, what appears to me by, by what you're saying is he's got this narrative that he's trying to create to uh, promote a, 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 false, a false perception, a false reality, a false uh, narrative. So... Um, there are there are multiple uh, ways that an individual can go. There are, there are multiple processes and ways and paths that you can go about doing this. And um, you know everything was above board. Um, and you know, like I said, it's just uh, I'm not surprised uh, to hear this because uh, you know I, I've been hearing these sort of false narratives uh, from him and uh, you know his camp uh, for uh, for a long period of time. And 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 that's fine. Uh, but. Uh, uh, 
uh, I would suggest that if you have some questions on these, then maybe the best person to call is the assessor uh, himself. And uh, I'm, in fact, I, I, instead of calling him, maybe you want to come in and, and sit down with him and, and talk with him. And uh, it's an open book, and uh, uh, I, I think that's the most clearest, best, transparent way to uh, to get the information. But but basically saying to me that this guy over here, who's you know, uh, who worked at City Hall for eight years, but didn't know what the process was until he left and and kind of checked into it says A, B, C, and D, I mean, you know, come on, this is an individual that has kind of ran against me and uh, at every opportunity is, is sniping at me and uh, trying to uh, manipulate things. And, and that's, I mean, that's politics, so I, I don't, I don't, I'm not necessarily going to complain about that, but if you want the facts and you want to know, then you should talk to the people involved in the process, and that's really all I'm saying. I think that's a fair way to get the information you're looking for. Mr. Abdelazim said there was one form that, that he did receive through the FOIL process that he described as being half filled out. looked like uh, most of it was uh, filled out perhaps by hand with, with the assessor's writing, and then it was uh, initialed by you. And he suggested that was uh, a, a deviation from what the normal process would be. I'm not sure what he, what he bases that on. I mean, he's not an assessor. <laughs> by his own admission, he, you know, he doesn't, he's not aware of what the process is or, or works. And uh, I mean, the bottom line is you, you have to, there has to be paperwork involved. So um, I'm, not, I'm not really even clear what he's trying to say with that point. So the bottom line is that everything was above board and done the appropriate way that any city property if, owner if, could have yeah, pursued if, 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 they, if they wanted to. Not that any could have pursued, that, that many, many hundreds of people pursue on a regular basis because, you know, the system at uh, – at, uh, you know, assessments over a long period of time, uh, you know, they are out of whack. And to that end, is the city going to do anything about that overall to deal with uh, citywide? Citywide reassessment. Yeah, yeah. That, that's it's, it's, really not something that I think during my final two years and, you know, 11 months that, that I'm going to, going to take on. That's, that's not an initiative at this point in time that I would advocate pursuing because, again, um, if you do something like that, there's going to be major impacts. There's some people's uh, assessments or taxes will go up. Some will go down. Um, but, but to basically try to single out, and that's, and that's really what this is. So you want to single me out and wrap this really false narrative around that, um, which I don't really care about. I mean, it's not the first time that's happened to me from this group or this team. It's not going to be the last time. But, uh, you know, this is something that happens on uh, – a, a regular annual basis at City Hall. It's well documented. There are literally, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people on an annual basis that go through this. And I mean, the process is pretty clear. Um, Do you expect to seek lower assessments on other properties you own? Uh, no, around this the city? was. I mean, just to be clear on this, this was specifically connected to the Empire Zone uh, program that was in place when I purchased the property and when the program and benefit ended 10 years later. So, um, and that makes sense, you know, I think I, I moved in in 2007, so we're talking about 17. Um, the, what was told to me at that time, 10 years ago, did not match up with the reality of the situation. Now, I don't know if that's because there was instructions from uh, the previous administration to treat me unfairly or to, uh, to single me out or whatever, I don't really have any evidence of that. You don't have um, evidence. You seem to have a but suspicion. It, but it was, but no, I mean, but it, but it was out of whack. I mean, I th it was significantly higher than was portrayed to me uh, ten years ago, which is why I asked for someone to. I said, you know, this doesn't look right. This is not what I recall. Just take a look at it, and the, that's what the initial request was. It was I have some questions about this, and then it after uh, in the process of asking some questions. Um, the, the answers came back, well, yeah, after taking a look at this, this, this really isn't the case. So, and actually, Scott Snyder was not the assessor back then uh, when, I, when I purchased the, the building as well. So I could go to Scott and I could say, um, ask him some questions about it. And um, I think he did a very thorough job on it. And I don't think that, uh, uh, you know, for, for him to be kind of, for his integrity to be questioned or his good name to be, you know, drag through the mud because somebody wants to take some political shots at me um, or kind of uh, tarnish my 
whatever, Im uh, image, reputation, credibility, integrity, whatever word you want to uh, use, I, I think is unfortunate because he's a good man and he didn't deserve that kind of uh, attack. So then is it your sense this is merely a politically motivated attack on you? You know what, I, I, I think that the best thing to do is um, let people can, people can listen and they can make their, they can make their own determination on that. Um, you know, you, you know, with all due respect to Mr. Abdelzim, I mean, he's in my rear view mirror. He's not somebody I, I think about, focus. Uh, you know, I, I did that during the, the debates, the mayoral campaign. Uh, it was pretty obvious uh, in a city where Democrats uh, outnumber Republicans on a two-to-one basis. Uh, Democrats cross party lines to not elect me, to re-elect me. And so I, I think that uh, they're very familiar with him. They've heard what he has to say. You certainly gave him every opportunity uh, during that campaign, um, probably more than you give other candidates, Bob, but uh, uh, to say what he wanted to say about me, and, and people didn't buy it. They listened. It's not consistent with my actions, with my values. and I mean, you can make anything look like anything, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's just the reality. So um, that's really what this is, and I certainly don't begrudge anyone from asking me any questions about it. Uh, um, I was on your program a couple months ago talking about uh, uh, what, my, my trip to Vegas. I've talked to, you, talked to you about all sorts of things. That I was the Super I've Bowl. Now, see, you say that, and now people are going to believe that I went. So I think you need to, you need to do a retraction on that because you asked me, and I said no. I did not go to the Super Bowl. And it and, wasn't and you then, who took the pictures. And then I jokingly said to you, the reason that I'm not in the photo is because I took, I took the picture. But, but the bottom line. Both, to be clear, is I was in Binghamton, uh, watched it. And you did not go to Atlanta with any friends. No, I was, uh, and I'll, I'll put my uh, councilman Chris Papistrat on the spot because I watched the fourth quarter uh, with him and his wife on the south side. So, uh, and quite the exciting game it was, I'm told. It, it's, well, it, it was not, uh, b b believe you me. But, um, yeah, so you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up, and um, I, you know, we'll just sit back and wait for the next kind of, I don't know if we call these conspiracy theories or just kind of, what do we call it, attacks or false narratives, whatever the, I, I'm, I'm going to be in office for just under th three years, so I'm, sh I'm sure we can expect more of these uh, along the way and sometimes I mean I don't know if he wants to run again maybe that's what the uh, did you ask him that I did and he didn't what did he say he, he didn't pull a he didn't he didn't give a definitive a answer like Kirsten Gillibrand did when she was asked about it and then when, turned she, when she said no and right 15 and then, days later yeah after and she a few days later yeah so he was uh, he definitely made it clear he's keeping his all of his options open regarding possibly running for mayor again yeah. Well, you know what? Um, and just because um, you're talking about the property that, that I live in, right? And so, you know, one of the things that's interesting about that is that's the first project I did in the city of Binghamton. And I remember I was at SUNY Broom at the time. And you and I have had this conversation before. And I was making a decision on whether or not I wanted to buy a home in a neighborhood or, or what the investment I wanted to make was. And I said, you know, if I did something downtown, that would have more of an impact. Because at that point in time, you know, downtown was not like what it is today. And I said that would be more of an impact. And I, I remember around the same time, and, and I always think this is an interesting comparison because I was a deputy mayor, uh, he was a deputy mayor. Uh, we both talked about making investments in the city, right? He wanted to do this, this straw house somewhere on the, I think it was the south side. It was going to be the first ever of its kind. It was going to revolutionize uh, the city. And, of course, you know, that never happened, right? It was all talk. Um, and, you know, I think he, he just continued to still live at home for a while before he bought a house, I think, you know, somewhere, wherever he lives in, in the city now. Um, I talked about wanting to do this project, and here I am still in the same house, uh, renovated, still have the same tenants, haven't even raised their rents in that, <laughs> that period of time. Um, they're great tenants. A little plug to the uh, uh, MNDR Nuts and the Curries of India. Um, there's been a nut shop in that building for over 100 years, different owners, of course. And I think the owners of the Indian restaurant have been there for about 25 years. And I took the upper two floors and, and made them into like a, a loft, a, a residential loft where I live. So I still live there. I have no intentions uh, of moving. But I just think it's, it's ironic that he brings up this example that he wants to attack 
know, the first project I did in the city of Binghamton, um, that was the first thing I did, and the first thing he ever talked about doing as a private citizen never came to fruition. So I, I'll, I'll leave you with that, and the, and the, your listeners and your voters um, can can make whatever decision they want. I'm sure I've got some detractors that'll call in, and you know, I can't wh whatever word not poo poo is that. That's the only thing I can think of that's not an <laughs> on what I just said. But um, um, hey, you know what? It's a it's a free country, right?